Hello everyone, welcome to ESC Fan TV. Now, the MLB Grand Prix final is mere days away. We're very excited about that. And as you can see, I have a finalist with us here today. It is Aaliyah Thorpe from Norway. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> good. <laughs> so it's been a bit of a mad few weeks for you. Um, how have you ha found this whole experience from start to finish? I've just really tried to enjoy myself through this whole process and uh, taken it all in as the crazy, crazy experience that it is. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I've tried to just have fun with it and enjoy myself. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And so obviously you're in the last semi-final, so you only com competed on Saturday. Um, the mm. first two Saturdays, how was it watching it at home and seeing all the artists on the stage and then almost like preparing yourself, but also trying to like, I guess, might not compare yourself or like, how was it, say, watching potentially now your competitors the first two Saturdays before you competed yourself? Well, actually, the first Saturday, I didn't, I didn't really... Uh, I didn't have the guts to watch <laughs> because I was I was really nervous and uh, almost a bit anxious to see uh, how I would react to just seeing the others and I was kind of scared that I would panic <laughs> a bit so I just uh, I watched it after it was finished and I just watched it in bits uh, but it just looked so much fun. So the next Saturday I was there uh, for the rehearsals and I got to see, I got to see Elsie when she uh, prepared and uh, one of her uh, rehearsals. And then I watched the show at home and it was just so, so much fun. And uh, then I really started to look forward to doing it myself. So, yeah. Amazing. Also, you just mentioned about seeing Elsie Bay's rehearsal there. Now, obviously, um, she is a co-writer on your entry. Um, so, yeah. firstly, how has it been working with Elsie? Because obviously, she's made a huge name of herself in the last year in Norway, competing last year. But also, as like I said, you're now competing against her on Saturday. Yeah. How's that going to feel? Competing against, you know, not only your friend, but a co-writer yeah. on this. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I actually, I have... I have the tendency to kind of forget that this is a competition. <laughs> so uh, I often just really find myself rooting for the others as well. And especially Elsie, of course. Uh, so if she were to win, I wouldn't be upset about that at all, really. Uh, of course, I want it to be me. But at the same time, the other people are so talented. And uh, especially her. I mean, she's she's an extremely talented songwriter and uh, I was just so lucky to get to work with her and also see how she works and how she does everything and yeah uh, if she were to win I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad <laughs> <laughs> I mean if she won you could go to be a backing vocalist for you if you really wanted you're like hey yeah. let's work together <laughs> like just take me it's fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I was just going back on something not meant to be. I just want to talk about the staging first because that mm -hmm. really, especially I don't know if you've seen it online, seemed to be a real standout. Not only just for Saturday, but the Twenty One Songs was the live band that you brought on stage, and you kind of gave the whole performance a different dynamic to those around you. So, what was your inspiration, your idea between, like, say, having this live band? So you had them behind you. There was a point when you looked over your shoulder towards the keyboard player, and then in the bridge, you sang towards the guitarist. And so you made it a very sort of like intimate sort of staging. Was that your concept, or did someone come to you with that? Like, how did you land on this? Um, say, almost like bringing, say, a live band to a contest like Melody Grand Prix. Mm. Well, we uh, when we were writing the song, we we quickly uh, saw that we wanted to have a band on stage, and we wanted that energy that a band can really create. Um, so. Um, I kind of I, I think I forgot the question but yeah uh the question was uh how we chose it yeah yeah um yeah and also it makes me feel really safe uh to have people with me there and when I was more active uh as an artist like years ago I had a band 
with me uh, on tour and uh, I've always worked with a band and felt a lot of comfort and joy from that. Um, yeah, it feels safer in a way to be more people together and also that energy that we can all pull together. That's, I really like that. Good. And obviously the song Not Meant To Be, it's obviously about, you know, a relationship which starts so strong and then sadly fizzled out and then you realise it's, it's come to its conclusion. Um, mm -hmm. What made you want to write about something that aspect and what made you want to take this to a grand stage like Mandy Grand Prix and for the whole of Norway to hear? That's, that's a good thing that you're asking that. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was fun at all. We kind of had... Um, the idea or the plan was to write about like my return to the stage and taking ownership of a bad situation. I've struggled a lot with stage fright and had a really bad experience with, with that. And that's what kind of, kind of kept me away from sta the stage for such a long time. And then when we <laughs> were in studio and the melody, everything was put down and everything was ready for the lyrics to just kind of, uh, be built up. Elsa came into the studio and was like, "Yeah, okay, so how's your life, love life going?" <laughs> and then everything just kind of shifted, and we went into this whole almost therapeutical <laughs> session where I got to talk about bad relationships and, uh, yeah, all, all of those weird feelings about a relationship ending and trying to just um get some distance but then you can't because they have such an emotional hold on you yeah <laughs> and then obviously we fast forward to saturday you perform on stage you go back you wait for the results and i just want to ask that moment when they did announce that you were the first qualifier for saturday's final mm -hmm. um Obviously, I, I will admit, um, you seemed a little surprised, to be honest, and a lot yeah. of us here were very happy for you, don't get me wrong, um, <laughs> but how was that when you got told you had qualified, and has it fully sunk in yet that you will be performing in Schlondheim in just two days? When they called my name, I think that was that was a weird emotional roller coaster because I really clicked well with Cyril and uh, Maria Celine especially. Uh, Akuvi as well, I've actually studied with her uh, at the university. Uh, so it just, I, I was so, I was expecting to hear that uh, when, when, when their names were called that they were through. <laughs> and then uh, I think we were all in a bit of a shock when all three uh, weren't sent to Trondheim and I remember actually Skrelex saying so none of us go through or what's going on <laughs> we were all just kind of yeah surprised and shocked and then when my name came up they yeah I just I was very anxious and very nervous to yeah but I I, I think I kind of yeah if, if I weren't through then that would mean that the three left, the, the three remaining names were all through, and that would probably make the suspense. Um, yeah, uh, not as <laughs> great. I don't know. Uh, so it was it was a really weird w weird experience. I was hoping for uh, the other three as well, and um, yeah. It was, uh, but of course, I was really, really happy and really glad to see this journey continue and uh, get to be with it, with everyone for another week. And yeah, <laughs> that's good. We, we are glad you get to carry on this journey as well because, say, hey, the song in itself is a ph phenomenal entry in itself. Um, I just need to ask, honestly, Tron Time is a huge mm -hmm. arena. It looks incredible on the TV every year that we see many Grand Prix since it's gone there. How does it feel just knowing that you will be on that stage in a few days' time? Like I said, you know, it's two days away. It's one of the biggest shows in Norway. Like, has it sunk in yet? Um, how are you feeling for it? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we were there today for rehearsals. 
and um yeah it's huge it's an arena it's it holds over eight thousand people so and my dad have given me the, the advice uh of just walk around the room uh get a feeling of what the room what the room size is and he, he told me all of those things last saturday and i really tried to do that and i was just walking around and getting to know the environment and the room and everything it's kind of difficult to do that here because <laughs> it's such a enormous area but um yeah it's crazy it's really really cool and also the stage is a bit bigger and we're trying to make it not smaller but kind of get that whole concert feeling into the arena as well so that's yeah very exciting i'm really really excited for saturday good we are really excited for the final as well and i know you said like at times you forget this is a competition mm -hmm. but there will be a winner on saturday and let's just fast forward and say it is yourself and you do go to the united kingdom to represent norway at eurovision how would that feel because obviously there have been some iconic Eurovision artists and singers come from Norway you know Bobby Sox, Alexander Reback, Kaino how would it feel to have your name alongside those who have represented your nation oh <laughs> 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 nerve-wracking trying to um to envision that um of course that would be so huge and also yeah that means that my name is kind of it's to be a part of that whole official story history of mgp and yeah i I've, I've almost not dared to envision <laughs> it because it's so huge and so um it feels so good to just be a part of the the heat that i was just in and that was really really nice and this is also so nice and I'm just um I'm taking things very step by step so I haven't thought too much about it yeah <laughs> <laughs> and just lastly I just want to round out what would you like to say to everyone that, that has sent you positivity from the moment you renounced to competing to this week because I said there's been a lot of love for your song and yourself online since you performed on Saturday, from what I've seen. Um, what would you like to say to all those people that are supporting you heading into the final? I want to say thank you so, 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 so much. That means the world to me. It's been, it's been an emotion, emotional roller coaster all the way and just uh, very scary, but really, really, really fun and cool and to be able to just stand on that stage and perform my song in front of so many people and know that it actually reaches out beyond the national borders of Norway. That's amazing. And I, I really, I really felt the love from uh, the Eurovision fans and yeah, it's been so great. So thank you so much. <laughs> now believe me when I say it reaches the entire world and people from here to Australia do tune in to watch Melody Grand Prix yeah. people will be doing that all over Europe from Saturday I can guarantee it because <laughs> I'll be doing the same thing <laughs> yeah great. <laughs> but that's all really thank you so much for your time this evening I wish you all the best of luck in the final and who knows we might see you in Liverpool but that, ladies and gentlemen, is Alina Thorpe. We're competing with the song Not Meant To Be in the Melody Grand Prix final. And if you're in Norway and want her in the final, make sure you vote. Because remember, you only got one vote for one artist. So if you wanted to be Alina, vote for her. Good luck, Alina, and wishing you all the best come Saturday. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>